Hello, welcome to Switched On, Paul speaking, and today we're talking about Super Mega Arena Blaster, uh, the new Nintendo Switch game. This could be game of the year, and if, uh, if you haven't heard of this one, it's a hidden gem, but uh, of course I'm joking, we're not talking about this game, we are talking about Fuse for Nintendo Switch. Uh, this is a demo game that someone has made using Fuse, which is a, uh, a coding application for the Switch that runs on your Switch. And uh, you can make games and make all sorts of games, 2D games, 3D games, all sorts of things. We're going to be making a game on the channel on a, on a new series of videos that I'm going to be calling Fuse Friday. So hopefully every single Friday, going to be uploading a new video on Fuse and sort of charting the progress of, uh, of a game that I'm going to be putting together. But more details about that next week. Just for now, I want to give you a quick overview of Fuse. And uh, just show you. I mean, this is a, a decent little arena shooter here, so this gives you the, an idea of the quality. And uh, all of these demo applications are pretty basic, so with a little bit more time and effort, you could make a pretty decent game here. So let's have a look, see what Fuse is all about. This is the code editor, but we're going to come back to that in a second. Let's go to the main menu. And uh, here you are. So this is what happens when you boot Fuse up. This is the menu you get given. You've got the code editor. Here is the first option. You've got media tab, and this is full of assets. So artwork, 3D models, um, music, voice samples, all sorts of stuff, backgrounds. There's just no end of content. I believe there's something like $1,000 worth of content or something like that. It's just absolutely rammed. This was one of the most impressive things for me. It brought a little tear to my eyes. Uh, as a coder of the 80s, and that's uh, some content from the Oliver Twins, who made so many games for like the Commodore 64 back in the day. Uh, if you've ever heard of Dizzy, uh, that was these guys that made that. But here they've added some uh, assets to the game that you can use in your own games. And uh, as this uh, Fuse Friday series moves on, we'll have a look at these in a little bit more detail. But yeah, there you go, absolutely amazing stuff. And uh, here is a 3D model that they've made of Dizzy. Very cool there. And you can change his animations. It's got walking animation and a spinning animation. Cool stuff. We will come back, as I say, and have a look at that in a future episode. Also got these characters. I don't think these ones are animated. Oh, there's little bits of animations on them. But again, these are all made using the art editor, which we'll come to in a moment. Uh, let's have a look at some of the other bits here. There's uh, some music, lots of different music samples that you can use in your games. A bit low key, that wants to get something a bit more jazzy. There you go. All free to use in your games, just drop them in to your games. What else have we got here? Some fantasy graphics. And these are all like animated as well. So let's try and find a character. What have we got? There's a little RPG character. So this is the what they call the sprite sheet. So all the different single frames of animation that somebody has drawn. Put them all together in this sprite sheet. And then you can view them here as an animation. All different sorts of animation. A sword swinging bow firing just zoom out there to get the actual size you can see it a bit better really really cool and again keep saying it you can use these in your games all different ones here from this creator who made this one Jason Perry really cool so as I say media tab full of stuff that you can use in your own programs talking of which it's a tab here that's got all the programs in. We're going to come back in a second, have a little look at some of these examples. Uh, you can store your projects here. And if you've got friends with Fuse as well, you can collaborate and share your projects. None of my friends, I don't believe, have got this so far. So we was looking at the, the media tab, all of those um, sort of sprite sheets and stuff like that. You can make these here in the tool editor. Uh, you've got an image editor and a map editor. So in the image editor, 
just give it a name. Oh, I don't know. Anything's fine. Um, and you can literally just draw my artwork is terrible. So this isn't going to be very good, but you can just draw away. Oh, it looks like a football goal, doesn't it, for a soccer game? Oh, kind of. Um, so you you do your drawing here, obviously um, in much nicer fashion than I've done. Take your time. Um, you could bring a grid up, different grids. Create your artwork. Import them into a sprite sheet, and uh, create animations for your game. Map editor, much the same. If you're going to make a 2D map or something like that, you can make all the tiles in here, all the graphics, and make maps for your RPG games. So those tools are included. Got some basic settings here. Lots of different things that you can change in the preferences. Lots and lots and lots of options. Turn the sound off as well if you don't like that. And the help section is really, really good. You've got comprehensive tutorials about coding, uh, reference guides, um, just so much stuff. There is a really good resource as well that I'll leave in the um, description below, the Fuse Arena website uh, where people can sort of uh, go on there. There's a forum there. You can ask questions and get help and showcase your work. So really really cool if you've ever used um code editor before if you've done any coding you may be sort of um halfway there with this if you're brand new to it there's real lots and lots of information to ease you in so really don't panic it may look overwhelming but it's pretty straightforward once you get into it so we're going to have a look at some of the programs we had a look at super mega arena blaster uh, so before we go into any of these in detail, let's just have a quick look around. By the way, that's Super Arena Mega Blast. You can see on the right-hand side there, you've got a preview of the code and then some information. It tells you that to make that game, it took 3,679 lines of code, uh, which isn't actually, it sounds a lot, which isn't actually that bad. It was created in May last year. So you've got uh, a 3D shooter here, just to give you an example of the 3D game. Again, none of these are, you know, don't look at these and think that's not particularly good because, you know, they're not meant to be. They're, they're demonstrations. And this is like a demonstration of 3D models coming flying at you. A little bit like Space Harrier, isn't it? So that's that one. Let's have a look at the. Uh, oh, I need to go into that. So that was 675 lines of code. Now, if you uh, imagine the uh, the 2D shooter, there was 3,679 lines of code. 675 just to make like a, a 3D shooting game doesn't sound a lot at all. So you see you can create you know pretty reasonable examples with not many lines of code. Um got all sorts here, four player pong, you've got a roguelike sound effects generator that you can use in your game. You've got um an old school racing game. Again, don't look at this and think the quality is poor. All they are is examples of you know where you can start your project. So really nice sort of 3D effect on the car. As it rotates around, sound effects can, you know, obviously Joy-Con controls. I'm going to show you one more. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, where's it gone? This Gothic Vania. It's got nice jumping, nice slashing sword effect. So now again, not a full game. You might look at it and think that's you know not very impressive, but it's a start. You can go in and edit any of these programs yourself. Start mucking around with them, and they they really are just sort of starting uh, starting points. You know, give you ideas. If you want to make something similar, you've got a good jumping off point. This was really impressive as well number of sports stadiums that have been created all in a game that you can fly around 
go up here into space. You can move around. If you press the R button, you can get all different stadiums. So we've got a football pitch, artificial tennis court, grass tennis court, athletics track, American football pitch, baseball. You know, these are all created from within Fuse. Let's have a look at how many lines of code that is. See if we can see that. So, the stadium program. 74 lines of code to create a 3D stadium that you can fly around. Absolutely incredible. So, if you wanted to make a tennis game, football game, gridiron game, you know, you've got the, the basis of the stadiums already there, and it's just 74 lines of code. Absolutely brilliant stuff. So there is lots of different um, tech demos for you to get going. And as I say, you can jump in and edit them. Let's have a look at our Super Arena Blaster. Just very quickly, behind the keyboard. Really nice coding in these examples as well. Lots of like nice indentation and commenting. Really helps you sort of um, figure out what's going on. So that's really cool. Very nice indeed. Now what I'll do quickly is just show you um, some code. Let's just start a new project. Um, I'll call it test. I'm using the uh, on-screen keyboard here. If you're using just the switch undocked, uh, it's obviously touch screen. If you want to use the keyboard, and you can also plug in a USB keyboard as well. Uh, obviously, if it's docked, um, you can only do that. If it's undocked, you obviously can't plug anything in. But docked, you'll be able to plug in a USB keyboard uh, and type away, which would be a lot easier. Although they've done a really good job with this keyboard, sort of as you move around the keys, your cursor snaps to them, um, which makes it really easy. Once you get a sort of a head of steam up, you can get cracking. I'm just gonna do a very simple program here just to show you how easy it is to make a program. We're just gonna put a loop in. I'm not gonna explain too much about what this does right now. I'm gonna say print. It's going to be print hello, where's the exclamation mark? Oh, there it is. Didn't need shift. Um, so print hello. And then we put another function in called update. This prints it to the screen. And that is about the bare minimum you need to get a program running. And there you go. There's our hello program. Pretty impressive stuff, but there you go. That's how easy it is. Four lines of code. I'm up and running, and you can start adding all sorts of stuff to this. You can change the color of the text with an ink command, and then the writing's in blue, and so on. That's how you build up your knowledge of coding. If you've uh, not coded before, it's very much sort of just experimenting with things, changing other people's code, and uh, you'll soon get there. So this is Fuse 4. As I say, we're going to be doing a series of programs or series of videos every Friday, Fuse Fridays, on Switched On. We're going to create a game. I'm thinking of creating Space Invaders, although I did see one in the um, example programs, which I didn't actually notice before. So... I'm not sure what to do now. So I'll have a little think. We'll probably talk about the project next week. Uh, see if I can get going. Let's have a quick look at this Space Invaders. I'm a bit gutted really because I really wanted to do a Space Invaders game. I mean, obviously this one isn't very good. We could make one that's nicer. I would imagine. This is very obviously very basic. Again, just a starting point. It's got no score tracking, no shields. You know, very basic stuff. So... Maybe we will do Space Invaders and try and do it better. Maybe it wouldn't be the worst idea in the world considering we've got this 
example here, we may be able to steal some of the code in here to use for our own program. If you've got any ideas of uh, maybe something you'd like to see me do, then uh, drop me a comment below. And uh, I have got um, some copies of Fuse for the Switch to give away, um, but I will probably put some information about that up over the weekend or early next week so stay tuned for that if you fancy a copy of this and you want to uh, sort of practice along with me learn fuse as we go along then uh, hopefully you can get your hands on a copy once I get confirmation of that so there you go hope you enjoyed the video this was a, a very quick overview of fuse for switch coding application really good stuff um, help you sort of learn coding make your own games for the Switch, and uh, really get you kick-started on, on a programming career. As I say, probably a good one for your kids. If you want to get them into coding, this would be a pretty good place to start, especially if they love playing on the Switch. Then what better to make their own Switch games to play on it as well? How proud would they feel of doing that? So really one to consider doing if you've got children. But as I say, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've got any ideas for a game that we could make on the channel. Uh, give me a like and a subscribe if you don't mind. It'd be really appreciated. And uh, I will catch you guys next Friday for Fuse Fridays. Cheers. Bye-bye.